Living room conversation. If you're live in a room, isn't it a living room? Howdy, I'm Joshua Fields Milburn from The Minimalist. Welcome back to Living Room Conversations. I have a special guest with me today. My good friend Nate Green is with us. Hello. And Nate, I thought this was a perfect question for you. Perfect. And that's why we picked it. So this is from Julia. Julia says, I'm 26 years old and I still live with my parents. I would like to move out. Surprisingly, money isn't the issue though. The issue is, I don't know where to move. I can see myself living anywhere in the world, a bunch of different places in the world. And in your previous podcast, you've spoken about the paradox of choice. So that's what she's experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. How can I pare down my options so that my decision is a little easier? How does one decide where to move? Well, mm. so I, I've moved a few times. I, I spent the first 31 years of my life in Dayton, Ohio. That's a long time. You, it is indeed. Now, you grew up in Texas. I grew up in Texas until I was 12. Been in Montana for a long time after that. So you experienced uh, two different worlds yeah. uh, there. And then, um, well, we'll get to your story in a second here. But as I, when I was 31, I realized, like, hey, I've spent all of this time in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And it's time for me to make some sort of geographical change. But I was facing the same thing here. Like, I didn't know where to move, like because every place seemed enticing. And so Ryan and I, we did this 33 city tour, our first ever book tour for mm. our first book, Minimalism. And, we, and, and every city we went to, it was like, oh my God, I can move to Boise, Idaho. I can move to San Francisco. It is so awesome in Tucson. Man, I really want to move to uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Or man, Nashville is amazing. Yeah. So every place I went to, it was like, it made the choice actually more difficult. It's like when you walk into a Walmart. And, and uh, it's the paradox of choice. You have all of these aisles with all this stuff. And it's so overwhelming. You just walk out with, without anything. Mm -hmm. because, and so a lot of people can get that, that they can get paralyzed by that. So, ah, well, forget it. I'll just stay here because this is good enough. This mm -hmm. is comfortable. Yeah, it's safe. And so what I learned is we were, we were actually driving through Montana, which is where you and I met. Yep. And uh, we were driving through, through Montana. And, and it was like absolutely gorgeous. I mean, we were driving down I-90, and I saw these college kids who were skinny dipping on the side of the road in this like little, this small little waterfall hot spring thing. It looked like an Abercrombie and Fitch. It ad. may have been. <laughs> <laughs> That's the well, only advertising ever in Montana you stumbled upon. Well, well, it was it was like so beautiful that like you can tell that a place like like that would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to affect this. Yes. And I, I shit you not. A bald eagle flew over no. head. I, I mean, it, it wasn't like carrying an American flag. We planned that for you. I, thank you. <laughs> well, it worked because Ryan looked over at me. It's the first time in my life I ever did a triple take because I'm like, what, 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 what is going on here? Like, there, there's, the, there are. This is like what everyone try, uh, dreams about with respect to Montana. Mm -hmm. And so we were driving through there, and I realized like, okay, we got to come back out here. Ryan, Ryan looked at me. He goes. Man, we, we should come back out here to write our next book. And so, so that's what we did. We rented a cabin on the side of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. And we found ourselves gravitating toward Missoula. It was about two hours away. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up in Missoula, not because that's where we were going to go for the rest of our lives, but it was right for the next chapter yes. of our lives. And I think that's the thing that's important, realizing that it was time for me to graduate from Dayton, Ohio. It's not to say that I won't ever go back. But it's to say that like I was graduating from the place before I had to divorce it. And the same thing was true with uh, a place like Missoula. We recently moved to here. We're in my living room in, in Los Angeles. We moved to Los Angeles because this is where people go to tell stories. Absolutely. And that's why we're, we're here now. Is we want to tell our story and, and highlight other people's stories. But what we, what, what we found is like this was the best place for us to go during the next chapter. And I think quite often people get caught up and they think, you know what, I have to find a place that's gonna be permanent. Not mm. realizing that impermanence is, is, is the only state of, of, of moving forward. Impermanence is the only state of everything, right? Everything yeah. changes. So the way that I look at this too is uh, I have this concept, um, I forget where I learned some business book and it's forever for now. And what I love about that is you commit to something um, but once you commit, you're not there for the rest of your life. You don't have to be, right? So I love the, uh, the way that you talk about next chapters in your life. So I forget the person who asked the question. Jennifer. Her Jennifer. So, no, no, I'm sorry. It was Julia. Uh, Julia, yes. Okay, so with Julia, um, 
one thing that resonated with me with what you just said was uh, you did this book tour. So you were in 33 different cities, right? So right. you got a little taste of all of these different areas. Yeah. And so for me, I've been uh, lucky enough to travel a lot too around the US and around the world. And what I love to do is go to a place just for a weekend. And I try to either find someone uh, that I know there that can show me around, or I find an activity that I already kind of like. So I love coffee, you and I share this, right? Yeah. Um, we were making some amazing coffee earlier before this. And uh, I love coffee so much, I was like, what's the best coffee place in North America? Maybe Portland, Oregon, right? Uh -huh. One of the top. Um, Los Angeles also, New York. And so I was like, okay, I, I just want to go to Portland for a few days just to drink some coffee, yeah. which may sound like a ridiculous way to make a decision on where to go to a place. Uh -huh. But I got to experience the coffee culture there and I loved Portland. And so I moved there for four years. Yeah. And that's the way that I would even recommend Julia start to think about this. We have this paradox of choice, but I would encourage you to think about, are there any places that you've already traveled to that you just clicked with, right? There's a part of it there. There's a feeling. That, yeah, like you get there and you're like, oh, I feel kind of home right now. Well, so, so I can tell you that like when we were on that tour, there were several places that really stood out. So uh, Tucson, which I already mentioned, Oakland surprised me because yeah. it was like my hometown of Dayton, Ohio, but with perfect weather. It's 71 degrees and sunny every yes. day. Um, and, uh, and, and so I, I really enjoyed Oakland. San Antonio, Texas surprised me. So, so maybe the question is like, what are some of these places that, that surprise you? Because I never mm. thought much about Tucson. I never even gave a, a, a thought to the state of Montana. I just knew we had a 10 hour drive to drive through the state that day. And then we got there and it was like, oh, this makes me feel a particular way. Yes. So you can't think your way out of this paradox of choice, but you can, in a way, feel your way out of it. And then you have, like, I had six different cities for me that were like, these are my six favorite cities. Salt Lake City, Utah was mm. another one. That made me feel a particular way. You can't explain it in words, necessarily. Yes. You can explain it only in emotions. And then the key was like, well, let's just pick one. It doesn't matter which one. Any of these has the potential for being amazing. And then you just pick one and realize, if this one doesn't work out, I'll move on to the next thing. It and, seems and, amazing. And this is something that I want to pinpoint in Julia's question. Um, she said money isn't an issue. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that means since she's not here right now, so I'm not sure how much money isn't an issue. Maybe she's independently wealthy. Maybe, which great for her, right? Yeah. Um, or not. Um, here's the thing. I think that the best thing you can do um, is to take a little bit of money and then pick maybe three to five cities, either places you've already been to or places that you've always kind of wanted to go or there's an activity or a person there that you really want to, uh, to see or to experience, right? And then I say you take a weekend trip there or a, or a week if you can afford it mm -hmm. and you go and you actually live in that city as if you lived there um, for a long time yeah. and you go to the coffee shops, you go to restaurants, you go to the parks, you find a gym, you like you do all the things that you love to do and yeah. you get to experience that city for a week. It's like going on a mini date mm -hmm. with a city and then after a couple of months of doing that, like maybe you can afford to do it just back to back to back or maybe you do it over the course of six months to a year while you're still living at your parents' house. At the end of that year, you're going to have been to five different places that you love or could see yourself living for a small time and then you just pick one it's and funny. then you just go for it it's funny you say that because you know i didn't follow that recipe exactly but something pretty close to that when we moved before we moved to missoula like there were a few places boise idaho was, was one where we almost mm. moved and ryan and i we we spent four or five days there and just hung out got to know the city a little bit and then with same thing with missoula we came back to missoula after the the crazy bald eagle yeah. experience and we spent a week there and, and, and got to learn the city to make sure this was the right next step. Not yes. the next, fi not, not, not the final step, but the right next step. Yes, and, this is, and uh, this is something that I try to apply in every part of my life. When I'm, when I'm doing well, and I don't always remember to do this, but I, I tend to think uh, in terms of small tests. Like, how can I just test this thing I think I want to do to see if it's a good idea, to yeah. see if I really uh, want to commit to it, right? Yeah. So traveling for a weekend or a week or so is a small test before you fully commit to something. Like, you don't, I mean, most people don't go on a date for the first time and go, we're going to get married now. Right. You're amazing and perfect. And I would love to continue <laughs> to hang out with you for the rest of my entire life. Right. Or if they do, it's often a big mistake. Oh, we got a phone call coming in. <laughs> I feel like we're in like... Mr. Rogers' neighborhood or something where. Got it. Can you sit him up? Thank you. Can we?
we keep that in yeah. the video. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're back. I think we're back. <sighs> All right. Um, I, I don't know where we were, but we were talking about oh, dipping your toe in the water. Small test. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so as opposed to diving all the way in, you don't have to just move to a city and then say, "Oh crap, I hate this." Three months later. Absolutely. Uh, with Los Angeles, Bex and I came out here probably half a dozen times before we really figured out what neighborhood. Because Los Angeles is a the, the LA LA County is eighty eight different municipalities. Mm -hmm. Figuring out what the ideal place for us to be, where's our tribe, yes. was also important. So. We, we did the time, the research, so that we did make the leap, or if we decided not to make the leap, then, then the time was well spent either way. So there's uh, one more thing I want to say on that thing, because that's a really important point. Um, I said I moved to Portland for four years. I moved to southeast Portland, uh -huh. inner southeast. And to me, that neighborhood had a very specific feel to it. It mm -hmm. was walkable, there were amazing restaurants. Everything that I needed was right there, and I could walk everywhere. If I would have just moved to Portland and moved to uh, way up in northeast or northwest or, or some Clackamas. Place, or Clackamas <laughs> or wherever where the Nike campus is. I don't even know where that is. Um, if I were just to like move to a city and just go, I'm gonna live wherever without any kind of research at all, without going there and kind of exploring first, I may have hated Portland mm. and I would have had a bad taste in my mouth the whole time. Every time someone would say Portland, I'm like, ah, I don't like that city. Yeah. But it may just be that I didn't find my tribe and the place that I really felt like it uh, was like a home. Yeah, I think for the first several times I came out to Los Angeles before we started considering moving here, I didn't really like it. I had to come here for different media things and it's because I didn't find the right pockets for mm. me. So it was key to find those pockets uh, of people and places that yeah. I enjoyed that felt right for me. And they may not feel right for you, yeah. and that doesn't matter, right? It may not be the right thing for someone else. The question is, what is the right thing for you? In the show description below, we'll put a link to Nate's website. It's nategreen.org, and uh, he writes a lot about health and fitness and travel and well-being. Mm. And you can check that out. And then uh, also, if you have a, a question for Living Room Conversations, please leave it in the comments below. That's the best place to ask your question. We'll answer it on a future episode. And if you like these answers, you can subscribe wherever. I don't know, Jordan. They subscribe somewhere. Or, or don't subscribe. I don't really <laughs> care. All right, y'all. We'll see you next time. Take care. The Minimalists.